so with that, I'd like to get into sort of introducing some concepts and ideas and resources related to emergency management um, and livestock and poultry production and really, uh, you know, why it's important and where you can start to go to further educate yourself uh, on this topic after today's introductory webcast. So a lot of folks, you know, uh, always say or I hear this when I'm pushing pr extension programs in this area, you know, we'll worry about emergencies later. So much else going on right now. And what I really wanted to do with this slide here was sort of tie together um, these three areas and how they're already so related, you know, types of management systems and some of the issues that we may already be dealing with as uh, AFO CAFO managers or advisors of confined animal feeding operations and, and other livestock production systems. But, you know, essentially here we have, you know, one of my bubbles here, livestock and poultry production. And many of us here today are engaged in the environmental and waste management aspect of that. Um, but then this other bubble, you know, introducing emergency management and response, we sort of have a nexus here where, you know, we would need to consider things like natural disasters and foreign animal diseases, uh, mass mortalities. I saw when many of you were checking in, um, some folks that I know that were involved with mass mortality management with the avian influenza outbreak. Um, Time to time, you know, on animal feeding operations might have to do with deal with contaminated feed or or products, and those are wastes that we have to manage and keep out of the uh, food supply chain. And uh, you know, it's another um, it's another aspect of how emergency response uh, relates back to managing confined animal feeding operations. Of course, we can have manure spills, fuel and chemical spills, uh, worker accidents at different scales. So really across the whole emergency and disaster spectrum, um, we should be concerned about that as managers or advisors to managers of livestock operations. So really how I um, am able to uh, provide programming to my clients uh, in Montana and in our region um, is through participating in another extension professional group called EDEN, the Extension Disaster Education Network. Uh, you see the link here, so you can look them up later, or uh, just Google Eden and Extension together. And uh, basically, this group is um, not unlike the sort of team of colleagues and participants we have with the Livestock and Poultry Environmental Learning Center. Uh, it's a, just a professional group about an important topic, and it provides a platform for professional development, collaboration, and grant writing. Um, access to curricula for programs and outreach and sort of to borrow some of the parlance of emergency management. I, uh, I describe Eden as essentially educational mutual aid and uh, Eden is supported by uh, USDA, NOAA, and participating land and sea grant institutions. So I'm sort of going to give some examples of a couple Eden products and then some Eden inspired activities that we've engaged with uh, here in Montana that sort of weaves together concepts of emergency and disaster management and uh, management within the livestock and poultry industry. So first and foremost, uh, we really benefit a lot from introducing this particular program and curriculum in Montana where we brought together stakeholders in the livestock sector, emergency managers, law enforcement, um, and other stakeholders at the community level to look at vulnerabilities to disaster in their ag, food, natural, and cultural resources. Um, so just a community-based assessment and then planning process that brought together all of these entities. You know, and, it, and for many people in the livestock sector, it made them aware for the first time of how um, natural disasters could impact them uh, or roles um, or disasters of the livestock industry or poultry industry, like avian influenza, how that would impact the greater community. So this uh, curriculum really helped our state begin to prepare for um, how to work as a community when natural disasters in, uh, affect agriculture or the natural disaster uh, is sort of agriculture based. So some examples of things we've done, um, the training with toys exercises for foot and mouth disease, 
Um, it's a lot of fun. We do this with adults, um, but basically it allows them to visualize this incident command system and sort of the response mechanism that's out there. Uh, and you'll hear more about that today. Uh, so really just it pulls together, you know, thinking about this on this, this hypothetical landscape. Uh, and we can map out things like stop movement, quarantine, surveillance zones around different farms and ranches, um, where and how to deal with mass mortality. You start thinking about other issues like continuity of business and, and getting back up to speed uh, with the various uh, commodities or production. So at any rate, um, just a pretty good example that's been a fun way to teach. Um, other exercises we've done in Montana because of uh, wildfire threats and uh, to a lesser degree flooding threats, uh, we've done a lot of animal evacuation uh, trainings and exercises, um, certainly within livestock, but uh, within companion animals as well, and sort of that hybrid situation uh, that you might have with hobby farms and certain equine operations. Um, but we've just found this, you know, as one of the one of the important areas to address within our state interacting with the livestock industry. Um, just following up a little more on the on the sheltering. Um, We've done quite a bit of youth with companion animals, which is not the usual um, sort of topic area for um, a livestock and poultry environmental learning center, but it was really important to understand that when natural disasters hit communities, it's going to impact the human population and their health and safety is first and foremost foremost uh, the important uh, you know the important part of response, but then we also have to deal with companion animals uh, and then livestock as well. Another issue uh, in Montana uh, that has uh, reared its ugly head many times are uh, these livestock truck accidents. Um, we have a lot of cattle coming out of Canada. We have, um, you know, not like the mid Midwest, but some significant pork production and a lot of pigs on the roads as well. And uh, so this was an area, we think about shipments of animals leaving feeding operations. Um, we had to address this in our state. We've done tabletop exercises and trainings. We've also done um, actual exercises with first responders, law enforcement, et cetera, and veterinarians on how to handle animals, how to extricate them from uh, turned over trailers, how to maintain biosecurity and temporarily corral the ambulatory animals uh, in an accident like this. And then finally, um, how to humanely euthanize um, animals that are not ambulatory and will not uh, will not survive the accident. We've also uh, expanded out to youth programming and introducing concepts of um, just beyond sort of the traditional farm accident training to more holistic disaster uh, and biosecurity sorts of uh, issues. So working at our summer 4-H Congress with high school age members, we've had them go through Eden animal agro security course, which is um, a really cool little program built around a small family owned dairy scenario. Um, and then we also tie that back to some of the traditional programming areas with just farm safety and whatnot. And then finally, um, as a result of having deployed that program and curriculum that I sort of introduced with or led with, um, we've had some success with um, communities being better prepared for livestock evacuation and sheltering due to wildfires. Um, anyone who watched the national news last year knew that most of the West and much of the Northwest was on fire. Uh, and, and we had a lot of mostly range livestock impacted, um, but still we had some um, smaller confinement operations and whatnot that we had to deal with as well. Um, Additionally, uh, we have some other traditional extension programs like hay and feed hotlines. Uh, it's more of a disaster recovery sort of situation uh, to help folks who lost all their feed resources. Um, and then um, mortality and mass mortality management was a part of that wildfire response as well. So with that, I just wanted to paint a picture of how um, Emergency management really overlaps with good um, livestock operation management and 
you know, operators and advisors of AFOs and CAFOs should be thinking about these things. Um, and for many of you who have written, you know, nutrient management plans or coached your clients through those, you know, emergency management comes up in there. And unfortunately, it's, it's usually the part of the NMP that's sort of pushed aside. I wouldn't say disregarded, but it's not the focus. And so we kind of forget about it. But mass mortality is supposed to be in there. Um, you know, manure spill and, and water contamination response. Um, there are aspects of emergency management that are already supposed to be at least referenced in uh, nutrient management plans.